Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you're all well and keeping safe under these really challenging times. So today I'm going to be talking about the fourth element of the blended learning environment and that is to do with trying to encourage and develop and promote critical thinking and conceptual thinking in the online environment. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts about how do we promote conceptual conceptual and critical thinking, then please keep on watching. So my other videos have been talking about the very important elements of a blended learning environment and they, I'm just going to link that here, and they include trying to promote connection, clarification, collaboration, and this is the fourth really important element that we really try to engage our students' intellect by promoting critical thinking, developing critical thinking, and conceptual thinking thinking as well. And recently I held a live summit that was three hours long, but I had wonderful educators from around the world and they actually shared a lot of different strategies and really practical tips for us to use to try and promote uh, critical thinking and engage our students' intellect. So I'm going to share those with you. Now, um, I think that one of the best tools that we can use is the visible thinking routine. And I know that Ron Richard has released a new book that I have on pre-order, so I can't wait to read this. And I'm sure that there's going to be more ideas on different visible thinking routines that we can employ and use with our students. So visible thinking routines really, I think, allow uh, students' thinking to be visible. And I think it also allows students to to metacognitively reflect on their own learning and their thinking. And we know that research actually says that when we give our students opportunities to metacognitively reflect, then their achievement and their understanding actually goes up. Um, I think that visible thinking routines can also be used as group work and discussion and to actually direct your lesson. Um, so for example, we could use the visible thinking routine connect extend challenge and we could actually use that framework to plan a whole lesson so asking students what ideas connected to what they already knew so using their prior knowledge by either showing a video a visual or some kind of prompt and then asking students to extend their thinking or to ask what pushed their thinking in terms of that prompt or that visual or that video, and then asking students to generate questions and challenges that they had so I'd like to ask students a fourth prompt with Connect Extend Challenge, and that is students' ideas of how to overcome the challenges that they have identified already. So some of the other ways I think that we can promote critical thinking and conceptual thinking is using conceptual questions. So if we have an identify goals for learning, which is our statements of conceptual understanding, otherwise called generalizations, we can actually craft questions around those generalizations and use the questions with our students rather than using the actual statements of conceptual understanding. So we don't want to share statements of conceptual understanding with our students. We don't want to rob them of that experience of uncovering those very important understandings. But instead we use questions, conceptual questions, to try and scaffold students' thinking and to help students communicate their conceptual understandings from any learning experiences that we design. Now, there were some wonderful other suggestions uh, from the summit and from different educators that I've been working with, and they include using de Bono's thinking hats, which I think are a wonderful idea. There's also another suggestion for using Tony Ryan's thinking keys. I really like to ask students to use a graphic organizer to demonstrate their understanding. And there are many different graphic organizers that we can use. I love the brain frames. I'll put a link in the comment section below so that you can see how brain frames work. But there are just some suggestions on how we can develop critical thinking and conceptual thinking in the online environment. I do understand that schools and educators around the world are at different stages. And so if your school has just started online learning in their third or fourth week, then we may not be thinking about developing 
developing conceptual thinking and critical thinking, we may be worried and concerned and trying to support students' well-being alongside with their family situation and context. So a dear friend reminded me that it's always going to be Maslow before Bloom, which means that we need to be making sure that we're looking after students' well-being first, their physiological needs as long as well as their psychological needs before we start trying to engage them in learning experiences and continuing with the curriculum. So thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, please stay safe, everyone. My heart is with everyone at this present time. I know that educators around the world are working so hard. And I think along with healthcare workers, educators and teachers are heroes in our society at the moment. So thank you again and hope to see you next time. Bye.